Hello, my friends. I'm going to start on maybe the one minute mark. So keeping track of the time right now. Got a little less than a minute. For those of you that are watching the recording, one minute mark. So you can fast forward to the one minute mark if you wish. And then I'll start talking. So give people just a moment, a minute, literally one minute to pull up and collect to watch the live version, which is right now. Hi, Kimberly. I just saw you on private message. Nice to see you. So another half a minute, starting now, another 30 seconds, and I'll start talking about the title of this live feed. Four people on so quickly. Hi everyone. My website, by the way, if you end up digging this stuff, I got lots of articles on the topic matter, among other topic matter, TomBurkenmeyer.com. Take out the space, all over case. TomBurkenmeyer.com. And I'm going to start in another, another five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So the frustrating discussion about healthcare is everyone thinks on the surface it's a great idea that everyone be covered, and it is a great idea. Who doesn't want everyone to be covered? I don't think anybody really is in favor of letting people suffer and die because they don't have access to basic healthcare coverage. But the question comes up in valid questions. How's it going to be paid for? And what's it going to do to the quality of the care? <clears throat> Paying for it is easy peasy. I've been making a lot of content about this lately, but I'm going to focus more on the quality of the care in this one. Um, so, but a real quick review for those of you that haven't seen me talking about it, to have it paid for, easy peasy. Corporate welfare, nobody agrees that billionaires should be getting welfare of any kind. It's not meant for them. But we do it in the sum of two to five trillion dollars every year. So <clears throat> we take corporate welfare away and we shuttle that towards single payer Medicare health care for everybody. And that would only cost less than a trillion dollars. So that leaves more than a trillion dollars on the table after everybody's covered. Nobody pays more in taxes. Everybody's covered. Easy peasy. It's like first grade level math. Two minus one is one. So paid for with an extra trillion left over. Easy peasy. Paid for. Done. So the quality of the care. So the, here's a frustrating part. Um, I had a friend who's a, a well-meaning friend just come up with the most obnoxious, gross claim that um, the healthcare would would go down. And his basis for this, and this is a you know a common belief, is that they look at the VA because VA is based on a single-payer system, <clears throat> but that's apples and oranges. They don't really have anything to do with each other because it's not single-payer for everybody. It's run by a different entity within the government. It's run by a different department. Um, and the VA is wildly unpopular. So, of course, their version of a single pair would not work. It's already been tested and it sucks. So a good rule of thumb in life in general is you do lots of testing on different things. You scrap what doesn't work. And when you come across something that does work, you scale up on that, right? When something really great comes along, you scale up. Well, Social Security and Medicare are the two most popular programs in the government. There's not many popular programs in the government because they don't work very well. So maybe we should get rid of a lot or fix a lot. Who knows? But these are actually two programs that are wildly popular. People love it. They love the service. They love the quality. They love the care. Medicare and uh, Medicaid and Social Security, two enormously overwhelming, overwhelmingly successful programs by the government. So it makes sense. Scale up on that mother trucker. Medicare for everybody because it's so wildly popular. We already know how it's going to be paid for. It's as easy as first grade level math. It's as easy as literally two minus one equals one. Paid for a trillion dollars left over cash in the table. Paid for. So the quality of the care would be awesome because Medicare is already wildly popular and the quality of that is great and it would get even better under such a program like this. So comparing that to VA single payer coverage, is, it's just apples and oranges and a lot of people use that as their basis. You know where that talking point comes from? It comes from uh, politicians and lawyers and maybe leadership a little bit, but um, from certain private companies that have a lot to lose if we took away private health insurance. If health insurance was no longer for profit, there's uh, private insurance companies that would be all out, you know, there would be no more money in it. They'd lose a lot of money. And pharmaceutical companies, they would lose a lot of money as well. So there's a ton of lawyers, both Democrats and Republicans. There's a lot of politicians. We'll just call them partisan corporate hacks, Democrats and Republicans. And the frustrating thing is, is when you're talking to a person who means well, 
and they're citing the talking points made by these lawyers and different Democrats and Republicans that are paid for by the same donors from the same private insurance companies and the same pharmaceutical companies. Those private companies win no matter if it's a Democrat or, or a, a Republican. They're all bought and paid for by the same companies that stand to lose a lot of money if Medicare for everyone became a thing. So when you're talking to somebody that's repeating the same talking points as these lawyers and politicians by the corporate establishment, whether it's the Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. They're all full of shit. All of them, all the Democrats and all the corporate Democrats and Republicans are all full of shit because they're re regurgitating the talking points of their donors. We don't even know what the courage of their own convictions are. With some of those people, we don't even know if there's a person beneath that shell that all we see on the outside is what they're spewing from their donors. We don't even know what they personally believe because they're not allowed to speak it. We have no idea. We just don't know. So just right off the bat, when somebody cites a talking point that is coming from an establishment corporate hack, whether they're Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter because they're bought off by the same people, then it's not a good talking point. And obviously, um, obviously that puts an enormous gaping hole in their talking point if their talking point is coming from a corporate hack, whether they're from the left or the right. You know what I'm saying? It's really simple logic. If uh, somebody is bought and paid for and they're making a talking point in favor of whoever they're bought and paid for, then by definition, they're corrupt. By definition, there's no integrity there. By definition, it's rigged and slanted against ordinary people. So it doesn't make any sense to go with those talking points. It, it really doesn't. And they're in the business of protecting their interests, and their interest is to take from you so they have more. So there is, um, I'm gonna go through these comments, Roy, and I'll, I'll get back to you soon. So hang on one moment. So <clears throat> where was I going with that? I will get back to everybody. I'll, I'll scroll through this and read through all the comments and I'll um, address everybody respectfully. I can't remember where the hell I was going with that. Oh yeah. Okay, so another argument that's made is that everyone should pick themselves up by their own bootstraps and capitalism and free marketplace fixes everything. There's no consistency in that argument, unfortunately. The private insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies and most of the multinational corporations, they're as anti-capitalist and as anti-free market uh, and as anti-pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps as it gets. Those fools, here's where they're operating from. They're telling you that if you suffer a financial loss, tough shit, pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. When they suffer a financial loss, they get it reimbursed. They get bailed out with your money. That's why you can't get reimbursed when you suffer a loss. It has to go to them, people that make 10,000 times more money than you in the first place. Does that make any sense? No. And it's not even consistent with their own argument about being pro-capitalist and pro-free um, marketplace. And get this, whenever they have a gain, they make some money, they don't have to pay tax on it. When you make money, do you have to pay tax on it? Yes, you do. You have to pay tax on money that you make so that they don't have to pay tax, the ones that are making 10,000 times much money as you. Does that make any sense? No. So they get to privatize their gains and socialize their losses. You have to socialize your gains and privatize your losses. Does that make any God blessed sense? No. And those people are making 10,000 times much more money than you, sometimes much more depending on the family we're talking about. So there, that's as anti-capitalist, anti-pull-yourself-up-by-your-own-bootstraps, anti-free market as it gets. Those assholes are not consistent with their own message. When they say capitalism, free marketplace, bootstraps, they're talking about you. They're not talking about them. They're just talking about you. They're not going to say that, but um, they're talking about you. So that argument that just let the free marketplace fix itself, if only they played in the free marketplace. You know that term snowflake that's been thrown around so loosely, they're the real snowflakes. <laughs> they can't handle a loss, they take it from you, people that make 10,000 times less money than they do. So th that's just an anemic ar argument that uh, kind of really pisses me off because they have no consistency within their own message. Um, and one more thing that they do, uh, the private insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies, they've barred Medicare and Medicaid by law from negotiating drug prices. Did you know that? That's why they price gouge the fuck out of you. They can mark a drug up 500% times more than what it should be, and 
there can be no counter to it because it's barred by law. They can charge whatever the flip they want and nothing, nobody can do anything about it. That's why drugs primarily are cheaper in Canada. Even the same dr drugs that are made by the same manufacturer are significantly cheaper in Canada because in Canada, it makes sense. You're like, yeah, they sh the government should be able to negotiate uh, drug prices. So they do. So obviously the price comes down. And in the United States, we don't get that right. They can make a drug that costs a nickel to make and they can charge $500 for it. Does that make any sense? And when you take bargaining rights away from one side, is that capitalism or free market? No. Again, these assholes that are preaching free market and uh, pr let, let the free market fix itself and capitalism and pick yourself up by your own bootstraps, taking negotiating rights away from the other side, again, this is anti-capitalist and anti-free market as it gets. So don't listen to their babble about free market and capitalism in this. I'm a huge fan of capitalism. Just be consistent with it. Play by the same rules. They're not willing to play by the same rules. There's a double standard, as everyone knows. This is a double standard that the media does not talk about. There's enormous double standards here that the media doesn't talk about. They don't have to pay taxes on their gain. You do. They don't have to uh, suffer financial losses. They get bailed out. You don't. You have to suffer financial losses. You have to pick yourself up by your own bootstraps. They don't. They get bailed out on the backs of you. <laughs> and you're not allowed to negotiate uh, drug prices with them. That's as anti-capitalist, anti-free marketplace, anti-pick-yourself-up-by-your-own-bootstraps. It's a double standard. They're not willing to play by the same rules, and they keep getting away with it because we keep electing the same politicians that are bought and paid for by them. <laughs> so there you have it. All right, I'm going to... Uh, so uh, to answer the question... In, um, well, anyway, let me scroll up. I forgot what the question was. Thanks for watching, everybody. Roy says, so we should depend on them to implement a better system than the VA. They put uh, that in place. Serious, I'm disabled and very uneasy about this issue. Yes, uh, Roy, the VA is very unpopular. Medicare is very popular. So we should get rid of what doesn't work, scale up on what does work. And by the way, this solves problems for all uh, veteran medical care as well. I mean, this would, you wouldn't even need the VA anymore uh, to handle your health care. Just Medicare for everybody. It's like the end all, there's not many end all be all solutions, but this is one of the very few. And the only reason we don't have it is because it threatens private insurance companies who absolutely have a double standard. I just went over that in this video, egregious, obnoxious double standards. Um, and, and the pharmaceutical industry that has egregious, obnoxious double standards. Single payer Medicare for everybody from one of the very, like one of the only programs that's historically and presently extremely popular by the American people. Um, scale up on that, Medicare for everybody. The VA doesn't need to be there to handle healthcare because they suck at it. It's wildly unpopular, but Medicare is wildly popular and it would solve a lot of problems. So I don't, it, to me, it doesn't make any sense when somebody cites Medicare for all being a bad idea because the single payer version in the VA is horrible. It's, just, it's like apples and oranges. That, that doesn't make any sense to compare the two. Work injury in Michigan and forced into work comp substandard care. Yeah, again, as part of the umbrella of an end-all be-all solution, Medicare for everybody it would, I mean, it would take care of that. I mean, imagine never having a medical copay ever again, a medical bill of any kind, no more insurance premiums, no more medical bills, no more copays, no more. All of that is covered, um, absorbed into the taxes. And like I said in the beginning of this video, that's so easily paid for. You take away corporate welfare. We do corporate welfare to the tune of two to five trillion dollars every year. It would cost less than $1 trillion so that nobody ever needs to pay another medical bill or premium ever again. And we still have over a $1 trillion cash on the table. Maybe we use that to lower your taxes for the middle and the poor. Maybe we use it for a new New Deal to take care of our infrastructure. Maybe more medical research uh, to improve healthcare even more. It just puts so many more options on the table when we have more cash on the table and everybody's covered. I mean, everything about it, it's a win-win for everybody except private health insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies. And here's another important point. Did you know that every private insurance company, all the big ones, 
They have individual isolated departments where their only job is to figure out ways to not pay out on claims. They're not in the business of paying out claims. They're in the business of collecting money, premiums and so forth and deductibles. And they're also in the business of not paying out claims. They only pay out a claim if they absolutely have to because it would be court ordered if they went to court. So they're always looking through, you know, the contracts, the paperwork, the legal terms, you know, nine miles high of legal work and they'll find something, some clause, ah, ah we, so we found something, there's not a comma here or whatever, so we don't have to pay out on this person's claim because they got cancer, they can just die. And there's cases of this. Um, for example, there was a woman, I think it was in Florida, if I remember correctly, but uh, she got cancer, sadly, and she went to go make a claim to afford the treatment for her cancer, and she was denied. She's like, well, what the fuck? I've been paying my premiums. I don't have a pre-existing condition. I've been paying my premiums faithfully. Why did you deny me? They got back to her. You know what they said from that stupid uh, department they have where they figure out ways to not pay claims? They found some, they found a pre-existing condition. And she's like, what are you talking about? I, did, I didn't have anything. She's like, uh, well, you've got acne, right? Yeah, what does that have to do with anything? Well, you say acne, and we say these were lesions on your face that resulted in blah, 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 and, and metastasized into cancer. And your acne was a pre-existing condition. You didn't tell us about that. Therefore, we're denying your claim for uh, to, to take out distributions to help you with your cancer treatments. It's like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. I've been paying all this, these premiums, really high rates of premiums, and my acne is a pre-existing condition that led to my cancer, so you're not gonna help me with my treatments? So obviously that person financially devastated and stress and couldn't afford her cancer care. I mean, what do you think happened to her? Suffered, died. That's the quality of health care that we have. That's just one part of it. So when somebody makes an argument that the quality of health care would go down if we took it out of the hands of private insurance, the for-profit insurance industry, are you kidding me? They have a profit to make. For-profit insurance is immoral on its face. They're not in the business of giving out claims unless they absolutely have to. They're looking for ways. They have departments dedicated to finding reasons not to pay out claims. Just like in this case I just cited here. And there's lots of cases like that. That's not an isolated case. That happens all the time. So for-profit insurance is awful. The quality sucks. Um, private insurance is highly unpopular. Medicare is very popular. And it's one of the only government programs that is overwhelmingly popular. And the only reason we don't have Medicare for everybody, it, it goes back to what I've been talking about in this whole video. Private insurance companies stand to lose a lot of money. And pharmaceutical companies stand to lose a lot of money. I hope that makes sense to you guys. There's no reason to argue in favor of anything other than single-payer Medicare for all. I mean, it, it's there's also not very many non-negotiables. Like, almost anything can be negotiable to varying degrees. But this is one of those issues that really is a non-negotiable. It's like single-payer Medicare for everybody. Non-negotiable. No wiggle room. No, comp no compromise on that. And the only way a compromise would make sense would be if you're an immoral private insurance company that has a lot of money to lose and you're okay profiting on the suffering and the death of many millions of people. So it makes no sense to compromise at all on that. So here's a website you guys can check out. And I'm not saying this to be partisan or whatever, but both the, the current establishment, Democrats and Republicans, are all full of shit. They're all corporate hack sellouts. They're all bought and paid for. You can't trust a God bless the thing that comes out of their mouth because they can't say anything without the permission of their donors. That's who they're doing their bidding for, slanted against you and me and everybody. They're not capitalists. That's the rhetoric that comes from their mouth. They're totally fighting for a double standard to protect their donors, rules that applies to them, and you, you guys have to suffer under another set of rules. So the defense of capitalism free market doesn't, doesn't work. So there's a website that I personally believe in a lot. You can check it out. It's called Justice Democrats. And I'm not saying this because I'm a Democrat. So it's like the Justice Democrats, in my view, are independents disguised as a Democrat because you cannot get elected to this stupid two-party system unless you label yourself Democrat or Republican. So the Justice Democrats, all of them, uh, rule number one with them is no corporate money, no PAC money. None of them can take any money from billionaires, PACs, or big donations, period. 
So they're all principled people. You can have a disagreement with them and it's an honorable disagreement because they're being honest. And every single one of them, every last God blessed one of them, are fighting for single payer Medicare for everybody. So those are the two big reasons why I'm looking at the Justice Democrats going, huh, I could disagree with them on other things and it's totally cool. But the two areas that I'm no compromise on whatsoever, that is single payer Medicare for everybody. Okay, check, because no comp I'm not compromising on that. I'm never voting for another politician again who doesn't stand unabashedly for single payer Medicare for everybody. If they don't have that uncompromised, I don't care what any of their other issues are. They're not getting my vote. And the other thing that's a non negotiable, no compromise, is they cannot take any more donor money, no PAC money, no billionaire money, period. So, and check. So every Justice Democrat, they meet those two standards. Everything else that they're looking at, it's like, okay, I can, you know, I'm open to things. But those are the two issues. So if you guys believe in that stuff, you know, you want to get money out of politics, because that is, that's actually the number one issue in our country. The number one reason why you suffer, uh, why poor middle suffer and this and that, the, the number one reason why there's a double standard in this country is because of money and politics. Democrats, Republicans, it doesn't matter, they're all full of shit because they're all bought and paid for to do the bidding of their donors, which slants and rigs the system entirely against you. So money and politics is the big umbrella that affects all other issues, including single-payer Medicare for everybody. It affects everything. So that's why those are the two, those are the two non-negotiables. And if I'm going to vote for uh, a politician, whoever they are, Republican or Democrat, Independent, Justice Democrat, um, those, those are the two things. Single payer, Medicare for everybody, uncompromised, or I'm not voting for you. And all money out of politics. No more corporate money, no more PAC money, no more, no more billionaire donor money. If you take a God-blessed cent from any of those people, you're just not getting my vote. Because if you do take money from those people, from those donors, then I know that you're not going to be doing our bidding for the betterment of the country. You're going to be doing the bidding for the donors. And the reason I'm making this video is because I want you guys to become aware of that and to start looking around and doing your research, following the money, see who's taking the money from who. And if they're taking the money from anybody, that's just, sorry, I'm not voting for that person. I don't even care what the disagreements are because they cannot be honorable disagreements if you're bought and paid for. We have no idea what, you, there's no, by definition, if a politician is bought and paid for, they have no integrity. So that, that's why I personally am following the Justice Democrats and their website is justicedemocrats.com. You can look at all their candidates, you can see what their platform is, and you'll see those two non-negotiables I outlined. Um, every last one of them is actually on page. Like other things that I care about, that are negotiable, it's like they're all over the place and that's totally fine and we can have honorable disagreements. But those two areas, every last one of them of the Justice Democrats are on board with those two non-negotiables and that's why I'm excited about them. So check those out guys, justicedemocrats.com. And I've written a lot of articles about everything I've talked about in this video, so my website, if you want to read more about that, is tomberkenmeyer.com, just like it's spelled here on social media, take out the space. All right, I'm gonna go catch up on the comments again. Let's see here. Hi, Christy. Nice to see you. Hi, Karen, Jamari, Kimberly. Thank you for sharing this, Karen, and others who have shared this. This should be shared. It's, it's not, don't share for me. Share because this message is important and we want our country to be represented again, right? Let's see. Roy has another comment. Let's see. Work injury in Michigan forced to work. Oh, yeah, that's right. I already, already read that one and, and um, commented on that as well. You are so right on. Ooh, thanks, Deb. I'm dealing with many issues with work comp, not paying wage loss, paying for scripts, court ordered, child support. List goes on. Whoops. This uh, list goes on. Are you okay with this as care? No, Roy, I'm not okay with that as care. That's why we made that comment a long time ago. So hopefully you heard everything I said since then. But no, because that sucks. That's why we need Medicare for everybody, because those things would not even be a thing. You just listed a few of many reasons why we need Medicare for everybody. You're dealing with workman's comp, uh, not paying lost wages, uh, paying, you have to pay for scripts, uh, court ordered child support. This goes on and on as it's related to healthcare, Medicare. You would never receive another healthcare bill again. You would never have to pay another premium. I mean, I've talked about all this since you made that comment. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I've already addressed all this. So I'll just say, you can go back and watch the video if you want, if you missed any of it. Our government is bought. Yes, it sure is. I'm neither Democrat or, or Republican. Screw that. Exactly. 
Exactly, Deb. I'm a very independent. But the reason I like the Justice Democrats is they're not even Democrats. Um, their goal, here's another reason I love them. They're, I, I already said they're independents disguised as Democrats because you can't win elections in this stupid two-party system unless you got the label of Dem or Republican. But their goal, and they're very transparent about their platform. If you go to their website, justicedemocrats.com, their goal isn't to reconcile or unite with the current Democrat establishment. Their goal is like, um, Democrats, you don't represent the people, so step aside, get out of our way. If you don't, then we're primarying you and we are taking over. So how's that for ballsy? Because the current Democrats and Repo well, Republicans actually have balls, but they're on the wrong side of the issues. Democrats are on the wrong side of the issues and they have no balls. The Justice Democrats, they're on the right side of the issues and they got huge freaking balls. They're just flat out saying, listen, corporate Democrats, establishment Democrats, we're the Justice Democrats. Either represent us or get the fuck out of our way, step aside, and we'll take over and we will actually represent the people. And if you're not gonna step aside, then we're coming after you. We will primary you with our candidates who are taking no donor money, no PAC money, no billionaire money, so they're all principled people, and we are forcing you out of office. So either represent or get out of our way, or you'll be forced out. That's the Justice Democrats platform. That's what I'm talking about, man. I mean, that lights me up. That's freaking sweet. All right, let's see here. Have proof of all things stated below, not blowing smoke. I hear you. Hi, Cesarina, nice to see you. Hi, Brenda. Don't feel either system works. If you mean Republicans and Democrats by either system, you're right. That's why I just stated it. That's why I like the Justice Democrats. They're, they don't want to reconcile with the current establishment. They just want them to step aside so that they can take over and represent. I totally agree with you, Tom. Single payer health insurance is what we need in this country. Big corporate insurance companies are all about money. Great video. Thank you, Lisa. I had to check out Justice Democrats. Yes, Karen, please do. Justicedemocrats.com. Go read their platform, guys. They're very transparent about everything. And as I said already in this video a few times, um, they're principled. There's no, they, they take no donor money, no PAC money, no billionaire money. Um, they don't take any of that stuff like our current politicians do on both the left and the right, the Dems and the Republicans. They, they, ta they take billionaire PAC money, therefore they're totally bought and paid. Nothing they say matters. In my opinion, whenever, a pol when I, whenever you're going toe to toe or head to head or talking to a politician that takes any donor money, you should be like, okay, have you uh, rejected all donor money yet? They could be talking about healthcare or the economy or the foreign wars and foreign policy and it's like the first thing out of my mouth if I were talking to any of them it would be like, yeah, yeah, okay, those things are important, but have you rejected all donor money yet? And if the answer is no, then the conversation's over because it's not gonna be a principled conversation at all. They're just gonna be doing the talking points of whoever they're taking money from. I mean, the conversation's over. It's like talking to a person that believes the earth is flat. Conversation is over. <laughs> I'm not listening to this nonsense. Um, so if you don't get on the right page, all due respect, politely but clearly stated, uh, we're voting you out. And that has to be the attitude of like all of us. It, it really does. So yeah, check out Justice Democrats, man. <clears throat> well, this was a fun live feed to make, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll leave this go for another minute if there's anything else anybody wants to say. I hit, I think I hit everything I wanted to talk about and I didn't even have like notes in front of me. Like usually I have to have some bullet points so I don't forget anything important, but I believe I got everything. So I'll let this go for another 30 seconds or so in case somebody else has something they want to add to the conversation. Is that a nay, yay or nay? Another few seconds. So all of you that are live right now, you got just a few seconds if there's anything else you wanna bring up. You can still bring up stuff in the 
after the fact too. I mean, I'll come back and check the comments. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing. Alicia, I'm happy you think I'm cute, but this video is so much more important than how I look. I mean, this video is a trillion times, the messaging in the video is a trillion times more important, but thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone, I'm gonna end this now. Seems like everybody got everything off their chest. And if you're watching the recording, feel free to leave comments anyway. I'll come back and I'll check the comments later. So share this, get the messaging out there. I don't care about me, I just want this messaging to get out there of all these talking points that I made. Uh, it needs to become common knowledge, okay? Uh, JusticeDemocrats.com is a website I referenced earlier. They're not, they're not really Democrats, just so you know. JusticeDemocrats.com. And they're not Republicans either, believe me. And, uh, and I've got many more articles on this topic matter I talked about at my website, TomBerkenmeyer.com. TomBerkenmeyer.com. Spelled just like you see it here. Take out the space, all lowercase. So have a beautiful day, everybody. And you just tuned in. Okay, cool, Alicia. I'm about to tap finish right now. So give it a minute to process. Probably less than a minute, it'll be available on my Facebook. So please go back and watch. And I think you will really dig the crap out of this. You too, Sherry. I saw you just signed in. Go back and watch. I think you'll dig the crap out of it because I'm just finishing now. This was a great live feed, everybody. So take care. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> Bye for now.